In this video, you'll learn how to create a Y2K iridescent chrome typography logo using Blender as well as Adobe Illustrator. So if you want to learn how to make this, just stick by. Before I even go on Blender, I want to go ahead and create my basic design on Adobe Illustrator. I find that it's a lot easier for me as a beginner Blender user. I go ahead and start with the text. So I click on the type tool and I try to find a font that I like. I was going for the Y2K aesthetic, so I tried to find a font that was condensed, but also slanted. The next thing I did was create a circular shape for the background of my text to give it more of a Y2K effect. I did this by grabbing the shape tool and creating the shape by using one black filled oval and then a white filled oval so it could look like it was cut out and then I adjusted it and then in order to create that shape and actually cut out the middle of that I went ahead and went to the properties panel and in the pathfinders tab I clicked on subtract and as you can see that made a shape and I changed the color just so you guys could see it better I then decided to add like a little star or a little twinkle, whatever these are called, by going to the shape tool, creating a sphere, and then going to the FX, pucker and distort transform, and then pucker and bloat. And you can adjust it to your liking. And then I positioned it within the logo. Lastly, I wanted to add a background to the text so i just used a pen tool to trace over the the shape that was created from the text itself and i just added a fill so you guys could see it also make sure that you create an outline with your text by right clicking your mouse and pressing create outline so that you're able to see it in blender and the next thing we're going to do is just export it by going to file export export as and make sure that it's an svg and on Blender, we want to import this by going to File, Import, SVG. It's probably going to be really small, so you're just going to have to highlight everything and press S on your keyboard to scale it up, and then RX90 on your keyboard to rotate its axis 90 degrees. You'll then notice that everything is very flat, so we're going to add an extrusion to, you know, take it from a 2D object to a 3D object. Before I do that, I'm going to join all the letters by highlighting all of them and then right-clicking my mouse and pressing join or control J on your keyboard. Now I want to add an extrusion to my object by going to the object data properties tab and within the geometry tab, I go to extrude and I went with 0.004 and I went ahead and extruded every object and highlighted everything and right clicked my mouse and set the origin to geometry. That way you can see the axis is at the center of each object and it makes everything a lot easier to move around. And I added a mesh plane uh, just so you guys could see everything a little bit better. And in the future, I'll probably use it as my background. I also wanted an outline for the letter or the text. So I copied and pasted that object and then I went to the data, the object data properties tab and in fill mode, I press none. And then I scroll down to geometry and where it says depth, I added the depth of my liking and I just adjusted it by moving it behind the main text. Subsequently, I converted the text mesh, the text object into a mesh by right clicking my mouse and converting it to a mesh. And then I went to the modifier properties and I remeshed it. For this, I use voxel. And this number is just depending on the size of the mesh. So just try out a number that works best for you and your computer. I went ahead and switched over from object mode to sculpt mode and I first went in with the smooth tool and adjusted the radius and the strength and I went over the text till I saw fit and I did this process to basically every other object 
The only difference is that I use more tools within sculpt mode. So I also use the bulb tool and the inflate tool. The next step would be to add the iridescent material and any other material you would like to add to this. Um, first of all, you need to go to Google and you need to search up iridescent material and just go ahead and go to the images tab in Google. And there should be a whole bunch of different iridescent wallpapers and images that are available. And you're just going to go ahead and save those, the ones you like the most to your computer. And you'll see what we are going to do with them on Blender. Back on Blender, we're just going to slide over and open a new window and create, make that a shade editor tab. And at the top, it's a jet object. You change it to world. And then I'm going to go ahead and add an environment texture. And this is where those pictures we saved earlier of iridescent materials comes in handy. So you're going to go pre press open and then import uh, that iridescent material. And that'll be the environment texture. But we don't have any materials on our text yet, so we can't really see the effects of it yet. So we're going to go back to object and we're going to add a metallic material to all of the objects that you want to be iridescent. As you can see, it reflects off of it. And another thing I do is go back to world and change it from equilateral to mirror ball. And I feel like that makes it better. Sometimes it just depends on your material. And now that I've added a material to everything, I kind of wanted to puff out the letters a little bit more. I felt like that makes the holographic look a lot better. So I went back to sculpt mode and that's what I did. I also wanted to change the colors of the few, a few of the objects that I had here. And I went ahead and changed the circular object to a pink color and also the stars to like a pink color and even if you change the color as you can see it'll still be holographic i then adjust the camera by clicking the little camera icon and moving it around with my mouse so if it's not there just end on your keyboard and then press view camera to view felt like the plain white background looked best with this and i also changed my camera from ev to cycles and that's why it looks like this now and a little tidbit with Blender, if you don't know if something's in the center, you can use that little measuring icon on the left and measure the length of things with your mouse. And I went ahead and rendered it by going to render, render image. And it should pop up. And I wanted to actually add more of a glare to my final render so i do this by going to the compositing tab and within the compositing tab we can add a glare clicked, i just clicked on use node and then i press shift a and search and i search for glare and i connect those two nodes and then i opened a tab on the side and i changed it to an image image editor tab and i went back over here and i pressed shift a search again and i added a viewer node and in the right tab, I change that to viewer. And now I can see my results without having to re-render it all over again. And I changed the fade to add more of a glare to it. This concludes the tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and making it all the way to the end. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you turn on your post notifications so you know the next time that I post and like I said thank you for supporting my channel I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one